let's take a look back at some of my most unpopular opinions according to Goodreads. Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm gonna be going and looking at my read books, at the books I read and gave five stars to with the lowest average ratings on Goodreads. So these are books that a lot of other people hated, but I liked enough to give five stars. I thought this was interesting. There were some books that I expected on this list. There were some books that I didn't expect. So let's go through the top 10 most unpopular books that I was a fan of, according to Goodreads. We're going to start at the top and work our way down to the lowest rated most hated book on Goodreads that I gave five stars to. But before we do that, I do want to give an honorable mention. There is a book that I gave four stars to that got quite a low rating on Goodreads, but I think about it a lot and I really have positive feelings towards it and I want more people to read it. So I, this is my honorable mention before we get into the official top 10 list. That book is Womb City by Tlatlo Tsamase. This is a fascinating and really innovative blend of science fiction and horror by an author from Botswana that is drawing on some of her own cultural mythology and weaving it into this dystopian, futuristic, horror novel that is dealing with things like feminism, gender identity, bodily autonomy, and domestic violence. And I really liked it. I will say it's intense. It gets quite dark and violent and bloody. And there were a few things that I was slightly critical of, but it's a really banging debut novel. And I wish more people would pick it up. The average rating for this book on Goodreads is a 3.19, which is definitely on the low end for Goodreads. But hey, maybe go check it out. I thought it was really good. I didn't give it five stars, so it's not on my official top 10 list, but I wanted to mention it when I saw it here. Moving on to the official top 10 list, be aware that I will also be making a video looking at the highest rated books on Goodreads that I hated, so keep an eye out for that. I thought this would be an interesting way of looking back at some of my unpopular opinions over the years. And one other thing that I will say is that for both of these lists, I made sure that I did books that had at least 100 ratings on Goodreads because I didn't want to target books that had a very tiny number of ratings. Most of these have many more than that. Coming in at number 10 is You Shouldn't Have Come Here by Geneva Rose. This has an average rating on Goodreads of 3.34, which is, again, on the lower side for Goodreads, maybe not the lowest rated thing, but this is a controversial book that a lot of people hated, I loved it. I thought it was really fun, but I can see why it's been so polarizing, and I'm not shocked to see that it has a low average rating on Goodreads. This is a mystery thriller that is drawing on romance tropes, which I really liked as a romance reader. I think people who are not fans of romance and weren't expecting that in a thriller kind of hated it, but I enjoyed it. I thought it made it fun and entertaining and interesting, but it follows a woman who gets an Airbnb in the middle of nowhere, staying in the home with this handsome guy who's like a rancher. And there seems to be chemistry between the two of them, but then things very quickly turn dark. It's a dual perspective book, and I loved it. It's very twisty. It's very over the top and absurd. It's a bonkers thriller. I thought it was really fun. I gave it five stars because I had an excellent time reading it, but there are a lot of people who hated this book, so I'm not shocked to see it on this list. Coming in at number nine is one that I actually made a video review of years ago because it was so controversial when it came out. This is Damsel by Alana K. Arnold. It has an average rating of 3.31 on Goodreads. And again, this is one that a lot of people hated. And I kind of get why, but I like what it's doing. It is a YA horror novel that is packaged like a fairy tale. So it's told in this sort of fairy tale style, in a fairy tale setting, but really it's feminist horror. And again, it's something that is talking about bodily autonomy, about abuse, about gaslighting, and I loved it. I thought it was excellent, but it is weird and dark and graphic. And a lot of people were not fans of it and thought that this should not be written for teenagers. Personally, I disagree because teenagers are dealing with a lot of the same stuff that adult women are in terms of the issues being addressed in this book. 
I, if you're interested in hearing my in-depth thoughts from back when I read it, which was several years ago, I will link that video review up above, but I gave this five stars. It was one of my favorite books the year that I read it. It is a controversial one though. A lot of people hated it. Coming in at number eight is Goliath by Toshi Onyabuchi with an average Goodreads rating of a 3.30. I can understand this. This is a book that is not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but objectively it's brilliant writing. It is literary science fiction and it's written in this really interesting non-linear structure and I think it's amazing. It's so well written. It's fascinating. It's dealing with a lot of really big issues. It is dystopian science fiction. However, I completely understand that this is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. I feel like you have to be willing to work for what you get out of it. It's a book that you have to actively engage with. You really can't be passive with this one. And it might be confusing. It's one that I could see someone reading twice to understand what he's really doing here. That said, I think it is a masterpiece of literary science fiction. I stand firmly by my five plus star rating. This is another one that was on my favorites list the year that it came out. Uh, but I do understand why the ratings have been a mixed bag. <laughs> Coming in at number seven is another controversial book that made my favorites list. Are we seeing a theme? I'm seeing a theme <laughs> in, the, in, in these books. This one is The Mary Spinster Tales of Everyday Horror by Daniel M. Lavery with a average Goodreads rating of 3.28. We are getting lower and lower as we go. This is a short story collection that is again blending horror with mythology and fairy tales in a way that is really pointed and worked for me. I loved it. Part of this might be my specific background because I think these are stories that often assume quite a bit of Christian religious knowledge and background and there's a lot of pointed commentary on things of that nature. A lot of it is dealing with things like sexuality, with gender identity, gender roles, and the way that we think about those, and issues of religious trauma. I loved it. I think the author is super fascinating. He's trans and he grew up in a super religious household. His father is a well-known evangelical leader, and it's really interesting to see the way that he's worked through some of that. I loved this. It was a favorite for me. It really stuck with me. Is part of it because I share some religious trauma background with this author? Possibly. <laughs> but I was a big fan of this. Clearly not everybody agreed with me, but I do think it is maybe a bit for a niche audience. <laughs> Coming in at number six is another controversial thriller that I had a great time with and a lot of people did not like. This is Madam by Phoebe Wynn. It has an average rating of 3.24 on Goodreads. Madam is a gothic thriller. It's about a new teacher at this creepy girls school that's isolated and there's weird stuff going on. I also do see a pattern. A lot of the books that I love the most <laughs> most. This is this is very interesting because I'm finding that a lot of the books that I love the most that other people hate, many of them have this theme of dealing with abuse and gaslighting of young women. <laughs> That's very interesting that maybe this is a thing that some people don't enjoy, are very sensitive to. I mean, it's an understandable thing to be sensitive to, but it makes me wonder if that's part of why many of these books are so unpopular, relatively speaking, but I love them because they work for me and speak to me in a certain way. Now, Madam is not perfectly handled. I think people can be critical of the fact that maybe parts of it are predictable, but it does give you lots of gothic atmosphere, and I am kind of a sucker for that. If you give me good gothic atmosphere and like a somewhat interesting plot and themes I care about, I'm kind of in. And Madam was like that. So I, I see the criticisms. I understand why people didn't think it was that great, but I really enjoyed it. So for me, it was five stars. <laughs> Coming in at number five is The Dinner by Herman Koch, which has an average rating of 3.22. That is so fascinating to me because I remember seeing this one everywhere. It's literary horror and it is weird and it is intense and unsettling to read and I understand why people wouldn't like it, but I thought it was really good. I don't remember 
everything about it because it's been a while since I read it. So let me take a look at my Goodreads review. So I said that The Dinner is a literary thriller, I would say with horror elements, that effectively offers shocking twists and horrifying revelations as consecutive courses of a dinner are served. It begins with a seemingly bland man and his wife meeting his brother and sister-in-law for dinner to discuss their teenage sons who are cousins, and yet the reader is slowly drawn into an unexpectedly compelling narrative that incrementally reveals the true reason for the dinner and what might have led to it. This is a book that deconstructs privilege in multiple forms, white, male, wealthy, etc., as well as toxic masculinity, and how parents can pass along their own issues and then enable destructive behavior of their children, even in extreme situations. I don't want to spoil anything, but I did think that this was really brilliantly done, and the sort of mundane blandness of the dinner that's happening serves to underscore how horrifying the things you learn throughout the dinner are. So I really liked this. I thought it was excellent, but it is disturbing at times, and I can see that maybe it wouldn't be for everyone. I thought it was really interesting that that ended up on this list. Coming in at number four is one where I'm like, was I just wrong? because I read it and loved it and then everyone else hated it. The, di the, the dinner came in at 3.22, but the next one is Ship It by Britta London coming in at a 3.17. I don't know. For whatever reason this book worked for me, is it because I like unlikable female characters? I don't know. A lot of people hated it, but I liked it. This is a YA contemporary novel. It's about queerness and being a teenager who makes some bad choices and fanfic. So I don't know. Let me again. I read this a long time ago. So what did I say? Yeah, I gushed about it. I gushed about it. People hated this book. I said I really needed something fun and this was just perfect and surprisingly nuanced as well. Ship It is in many ways a love letter to fangirls and to awkward teenagers who are trying to figure out who they are. Claire is a 16 year old girl who's kind of a loner but writes slash fan fiction based on her current favorite TV show. But when she attends a convention panel and asks about her ship of the two male leads, wanting to know if the characters will come out as gay, she is laughed at by one of the actors. This quickly becomes a PR nightmare that the show tries to fix by taking her on a convention tour and hijinks ensue. I thought this was interesting because we also get the perspective of one of the actors in the show. and. I think I thought I found this to be a really interesting exploration of the intersection of fandom and professional actors and how those things intersect. But yeah, people really hated it. I enjoyed it. That said, there's been a lot of criticism of this. Definitely the main character makes some bad choices. And it seems to me just from kind of scanning reviews that the people who are most upset about it seem to be some people coming from the fandom fanfic community. So some of it may just be that it's not hitting me in the same way because I didn't come up in that community. I wasn't writing fan fiction in the way that other people were because I was in a conservative religious household and wasn't like allowed on the internet in that way. So like, <laughs> so it is entirely possible that there are some nuances to this that mean something different to people who came up in that community. But when I read it, I really liked it. Would I feel differently if I revisited it years later? Maybe, I don't know, but I do know I enjoyed it at the time and that is definitely a controversial one. Okay. <laughs> Coming in at number three is the one that I'm not surprised is on this list because I freaking love this book, but I have friends who hated it. Ashley from Bookish Realm that is no longer. We'll miss you even though I know you're still doing Realm of Comics. Ashley hated this book. People are very split on it and I get it. It's a weird book. But I was a fan. Okay this is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. The average rating for this on Goodreads is a 3.12 which is pretty low. It is another kind of literary gothic horror novel set at a private university and it's kind of like a fever dream. It's slow paced, it's weird, it's more, it's like a fever dream through this university, but I loved it. I loved how kind of messed up the main character is. I loved what this was doing in terms of unpacking 
Ivy League universities and privilege within them and what it's like to be a person of color and an outsider in one of those spaces. But then also I found out after I read it that it was a retelling of something and I won't tell you what because I think it kind of spoils the experience to find out before you read the book. But it's such a good retelling of this thing and I was a fan so I know people hated it. I, I still love it. I want to reread it one day. If things keep changing it's because I'm filming having a child homesick so I keep getting interrupted which is fine because it's not like a hard video to do but uh, you know this, this is where we're at. We have two books left to talk about and these are <laughs> the worst rated books that I loved on Goodreads. Coming in at number two with a 2.88 average rating on Goodreads. That is hella low y'all if you're under three stars very low on Goodreads is The Unmatchable Bachelor by Kelly Papyrus. I thought this was really fun. I gave it a four and a half stars and rounded up so it's not a full five stars but still this was really entertaining. It's an indie romance novella that did not at all go the way that I expected it to which might be part of why people didn't like it because it does something a little bit different but I liked it. Really interesting. I think covers a lot of ground in a pretty short amount of space. So it follows this single woman who is Desi so she's from, from India, living in Toronto, working as a matchmaker. So she agrees to take on this client who's nicknamed the Unmatchable Bachelor because he's so picky and hard to match, supposedly. She takes him on as a client, but it turns out that he's hard to match, not actually because he's difficult and picky, but because he's hiding the fact that he's gay. And I think it's interesting the way that it is dealing with current homophobia in some of these communities. It's also got a romance element to it. I really liked it. I thought it was very good. It's a self-published indie novella. I don't know why people are hating on it so hard. I thought it was great. But uh, this is the second lowest rated book that I liked a lot on Goodreads. Finally, no surprise here. This has always been one of the most unpopular opinions of mine. Coming in at number one with a average Goodreads rating of 2.85 is the Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. Man, people hate this book. I don't know if it's the topics. I don't know if it's the way it was marketed because it was marketed as kind of a gothic thriller horror novel, which it is, but it has a, we'll say, speculative element to it. And people hated the twist in this book. I loved the twist because I think it's really smart. I think it's intentionally saying something that is super spoilery so I'm not gonna say it. It's in my Goodreads review. I have a spoiler section so if you really want to know and you don't care about being spoiled for the ending of The Tenth Girl you can go read my analysis of what I think she was doing there. I don't think a lot of people got that. I think they just didn't like it but I thought it was brilliant and I loved it. It is upper YA gothic horror set in like 1980s Argentina I think at a girls boarding school where a new teacher joins the school and weird weird stuff is happening. It is graphic. It's intense. I understand that it won't be for everybody but I don't understand why people hate it so much. I loved it. Again this was one that made my favorites list the year that it came out. I read an early copy of it, raved about it, and it came out and people were like, ugh, not fans. So uh, maybe unsurprising there. I do think it's unfortunate because I think it's a really good book, but maybe just didn't find its audience, which is a bummer. I loved it. So there you go. Those are 10 of my very unpopular opinions. Lowest rated books on Goodreads that I gave five stars to. I guess one of them was four and a half, but I rounded up to five, so we're gonna call it good. This was really interesting. Again, I do see a lot of similarities. We have a lot of feminist horror and thrillers in here. We've got a lot of difficult subject matter and graphic ways of approaching that subject matter that people seem not to like. What do you think? Have you read any of these books? Do you have books that people tend to hate that you were a fan of? Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.